and try and show you how the jugs degrade. They dry out basically. You can see this one is kind of cracked. Hiya, it's Wendy here again from Tim Pish Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm just going to show you briefly on how I clean and store my equipment that I use for resin. Now I've been asked a few times, how do you store your moulds? How do you clean your moulds? So I thought I'd show you how I do mine. Now I usually stack them to one side and then go through the whole lot in one go. Because it's clean, it isn't fun, is it? <laughs> anyway. I've videoed some bits for you, I'll talk you through it. Yeah, let's see how I do it. So first of all, I'm going to show you what happens to silicon jugs over time. The one on the left is new. The one on the right has been used about for about two years, to be fair. And here's a little one. Again, the one on the left is new. The one on the right has been used for a good couple of years. Now I'm going to turn the little one inside out and try and show you how the jugs degrade. They dry out basically. You can see this one is kind of cracked and the, the sound of it is dry and the large one the same. It has cracks in it, it's very, very dry. And this is basically because the resin dries the silicon out. And the more you leave resin in a silicon tub, the more it will dry it out. I've had new silicon jugs that have only lasted a short while because I've left resin in them overnight. Here I'm just trying to show you that even though I clean and clean and clean, I cannot get this silicon jug clean because all the, the resin has embedded itself. Because it's so dry, it's dried out, sucked in the resin and won't let go of it. And that can be expensive in the long run. So this is what I do to the jugs now. I used to leave the resin in and now I clean them out. As soon as I finish pouring, I start cleaning out the jugs with baby wipes. It makes a lot of difference. The jugs stay newer for longer and you don't have to do cleaning the next day when you get up after you've poured. That's the big issue with me. I used to end up with a mountain full of jugs that I had to clean before I could actually pour any resin. This way, it's all done before you go to bed. And let's face it, if you want to get in and be creative in your craft room or in your office or wherever it is you craft, the last thing you want to do is clean up first. It's not fun. I usually use biodegradable baby wipes. These ones are super drugs because I couldn't get a hold of any. And sometimes I squirt a little bit of alcohol on stubborn resin just to loosen it up and get rid of it before I wipe it off with baby wipes. Now I know a lot of people don't like using alcohol because of the fumes, so you can always wear your mask that you've been wearing while you've been creating anyway. So just carry on wearing it while you're cleaning the jugs and then vacate the room. That is what I do. When I'm done, I use some alcohol on my gloves, rub them all around so I stop them sticking up, turn them inside out, Put them into a box and they're ready to be used the following day. Now moulds however are a little bit different because I've already taken the resin out. So I tend to pile them up to one side and then wait until I have a cleaning moment. Now when you use mica powders on a mould it will go everywhere and usually the mould gets covered in mica powder and trying to use tape to get rid of mica powder isn't as easy as you would think. Well, not with the tape I've used anyway. I'm just going to show you here that I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around my finger and try and get out any little scrap pieces of mica powder in there, any little pieces of resin that are left in the mould, any little piece flecks of dust or anything with that tape. But I use a baby wipe to get rid of mica powder. In little tiny crevices, however, with these type of moulds, you get little tiny crevices, you can't get anything in there. So I tend to use earbuds, also knows the Q-tips, I think they're called in America. Putting a little bit of water on the end, it will clean them up nicely and you can get the Q-tip in or the earbud in 
cotton bud, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> into the little tiny areas. And they come up beautifully. And we've cleaned the backs as well as the front. So I've only used these mould a couple of times and I'm quite happy with the condition of them. So I think they're ready to store away. So now I've cleaned all four. They're all nice and cleaned up. Now, oh, there's a little bit of dust on that one. Now I'm going to think about storage. Now these are bags that are sent to me with resin in them. When you have resin delivered, usually in this country it comes in a polythene bag inside a box. And I always keep the bags because they're ideal to store moulds in. So these are just a bag of bags that come from resin and I pop the moulds into the bags and just fold them over so it's nice and airtight. Perfect. I'm just going to show you here, this is mica flakes. And mica flakes are very, very sticky and they're hard to get off. But with a baby wipe, they do come off really quite easily. But I am going to show you trying to get it off with tape. This is a piece of tape and I'm pushing quite hard down onto that mould. And although it's taking some of it off, it still doesn't lift the whole things off. It picks up resin better than it picks up mica flakes. So a baby wipe is pretty much all I use to get off mica flakes and, and mica powder. Tape is still good to get rid of little tiny bits of resin and fluff and all sorts that's left in your mould as well though. So a combination of the two is great and that comes off beautifully. But once I've done all the little pieces inside and out with Q-tip and baby wipes and I'll pop it into a polythene bag ready to store it. sets of coasters that I've cleaned and want to store I always make sure I put them back to back and next to each other in a polythene bag so that they don't get damaged while they're being stored. And when they're all wrapped up and secured in the polythene bags I place them in a tub with the lid pop the lid on and I store it on a shelf out of sunlight. Now when you use resin, the two most important things you can have is 100% silicone oil, which you can buy for treadmills and I used to use for acrylic pouring. And the other thing is silicone release spray. I cannot stress enough how important both of these things are. You spend a lot of money on your moulds, so you're going to look after them, right? So if you've used your mould around 10 times, then put a little bit of silicone oil onto a lint-free cloth and give your mould a bath. It will soak up all that oil and come back to life. Now, it won't save old moulds, don't get me wrong, but it will prolong the life of your moulds if you do this, and it loves it. Rub it on, let it sit for about 10 minutes and then with the same lint-free cloth you can take off any excess. And even with newer moulds, if you feel that they're drying out really quickly, then you can do the same. Again, leave it on and take off any excess. It will give your moulds another lease of life. Now with this mould it's got a lot of resin that's stuck around the outside so I'm using the tape just to get rid of the resin on the outside of the mould and then I'm going to clean the inside with some baby wipes. You can't really turn this one inside out so the baby wipe really does get out every little bit. And then I'm going to use mould release spray. To protect your moulds you really should use mould release spray before pouring into it. And because this is an upright mould and I'm storing it in an upright position, then I sprayed it before I store it. Well, I hope that has helped you in some way. It's definitely saved me money when I changed from leaving the resin in the jugs 
to using baby wipes. Although I have to buy baby wipes, baby wipes are really cheap and you can get the biodegradable baby wipes if that's what you prefer. You're not putting any liquids into the water supply, any dust of any kind. It's going straight into incineration in the bin. So yeah, it's better for the environment and it saves you money. I go through hardly any silicon jugs now. On the odd occasion, I'll split one, but it is so, so rare. I was going through tons before that and they're not cheap. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Come back and see me next week because you never know what I'm going to be up to. Have a great week. Happy crafting. Bye for now.